What is this magic? What is happening here? Am I falling down from really high up in the sky? Or am I just floating? What kind of magic trick is this? Well, it's creative mode, and listen carefully. We are not on Hermitcraft right now, okay? I am actually in a single player world using the same seed that Hermitcraft has, so we have all of the same terrain, and this will help us design and position a farm that we're gonna build in today's episode. However, we're also using the aid of mods. Check this voodoo magic out. <gasps> wow, we have giant glowing spheres and, and this is gonna help us position the farm in the world. So what sort of farm are we making today? It is a pufferfish farm. Of course, we need the pufferfish to make potions and thus we must make a farm. But you are probably wondering, why they are glowing gold and other mobs are glowing white. Well, this is to just confirm that they're going to spawn inside of the farm we're creating so we can easily see the puffer fish. And this is just done with commands. Somewhere in the world, there's some command blocks that give all of these different ones the glowing effect. So in this world, I also have a player that's AFK sitting above the farm and this will cause the mobs to spawn inside of the farm. If I go into spectator mode, you see the other mobs outside of it then despawn and start to spawn inside of this area. And it is carefully positioned so the mobs we want to farm, which includes the puffer fish, will be inside of here. And there are other mobs that can still spawn outside of here, like squid. However, they're in a separate mob cap, so they're not going to affect this farm. So this player, that is our AFK spot. And around it, you can see there are two spheres. The inner sphere represents where mobs won't spawn in relationship to that player. And the outside sphere represents where they will do. And so you can see our farm is nestled between the two, meaning that we get lots of fishies spawning inside of it. Now, there is another mob farming principle that's rather important. The lower down in your world the farm is, providing it has access to the sky, the faster mobs spawn inside of it. So I thought, well, we'll lower this down a little bit, and yes, that means that we have to then clear out some of the water, but that's not so bad. That's, that's not too big of a challenge, right? And that's when it hit me. There is a far better way to do this farm than to build it up here on the surface. We would sacrifice one thing though, and that is the ability to build a phantom farm here as well, so that phantoms would spawn, and while we're AFK, we could farm them as well as the puffer fish. So what was this idea? Well, I figured if we were AFK down at the very bottom of the world, we might not actually even touch the top of the water here, and you can see that's kind of true. There is now another sphere in this area, and up here at the surface we would have to remove the water with inside this space. It comes over to the edge a little bit here as well, but then everything else is going to be down here underground where there basically isn't any water, and then we can actually put our farm in this space right here down near the bedrock level. There is going to be tons and tons of space to build a farm, open access to the ceiling, and then the rates down here would be way, way faster than they would above the ocean surface. So as for the design of this farm, it's probably going to end up being a fair bit smaller than this, but because it's lower in the world, the mobs will spawn faster inside of it. And this thing isn't in action right now, because when I copied and pasted it from another part of the world, you can see all the rails here got messed up and the redstone as well. But it'll essentially be this design right here, but a lot smaller. And there is one last key detail to mention about this farm. We're building it in a lukewarm ocean, which means cod, tropical fish, and puffer fish will spawn here, but not salmon. And if we go into the video settings, you'll see that I've turned biome blend all the way off. This is to make it really obvious where the biomes start and end. And this spot has been picked because there is kind of a corner here with a lot of space around it for us to wedge this farm into. But that corner is obviously close to land. And if you just look at that circle right there, if that was ocean, then we'd have to fill that in. And that's why this location right here is so good. So to give you an idea of proximity, we are leaving my base, flying over EFOs. Then we're flying over the farming area we set up at the beginning of the server. And that's when we arrive at this swamp. And if you thought this sand here looked peculiar, well, ask yourself, what shape is it in? It is a circle, and I have filled in all of the water right there, where the mobs could have spawned, and replaced it with sand. 
So yes, it is a very brief journey to get over here, and in the future what we'll probably do is set up a nether portal. That'll probably be down at the bottom of the world though, because that's the AFK spot. And I've just started to build this out here. You can see it's right on the very edge of the border. I've also filled in some of the sand in the area where they could have spawned down here. So you can see there is a sort of spherish shape around there. But yeah, we, we now got to dig a big hole going all the way down to bedrock. And no, th this won't be the total size of it. It's actually going to be like triple this. So I've done some estimations based on where the edge of the spawning area will be. And if we dig down from out here with one big square, the entire thing is going to be in the correct biome. And then down at the bottom of the world, we're going to have about you know 20, 25 blocks of space to build a rather large spawning area. So it's going really well. But now I've got to extend this out with more sand, clear out the water and, and dig a ginormous hole. So a job well done. What can I say? We now have a hole in the ground, right? <laughs> there it is, all the way down to bedrock, which really stands out with my resource pack. And I've got to say, it's great in the nether. It really fits in well that way. But here in the overworld, you know, I wish it had a slightly different texture because it stands out next to the stone. But, you know, it's a big improvement over the original bedrock. I, I am I'm getting sidetracked here. Rails. Rails, rails, rails. Lots of them. They've been they've been put in place. Check it out. <laughs> Quite a few of them, right? If you were paying attention to the design I already showed, you'd know that we actually had a whole bunch of these in a row. But I thought I'd do things a little different this time and make it so that we only have one, two, three, four, five, six minecarts going around picking up the items. And due to the layout, it meant that I kind of had to shuffle one in under the edge over here. Now in terms of height, that sphere where mobs won't spawn kind of starts around this level here. But I was thinking it's probably a little too high. So this is Y20 and that is as far up as we are going to go. If I decorate the rest of the top of this up here, I don't know. But for down here where the water will be, I put in stone bricks so at least it's going to be nice and clean. And now the next thing that we're going to do is putting magma blocks. Lots and lots of them at this height right here. We're going to cover the entire floor with magma blocks. And there we go, all filled up. And I thought the next thing to do is to put water in there. But it might be a bad idea if we haven't sorted out the item collection yet. Oh, and there is some scaffolding right in the middle of our circle here. So you can probably guess where that takes us to. So it takes us down to the bottom. And this right here... This is our AFK spot. But anyway, we need a collection system, like I said, and it's almost done. Got to hook up the water streams below here. As you can see, it's all kind of spaced out, and I thought this would make the redstone easier, but turns out it's actually just easier to stick with a one wide design. So this is pretty classic. You've probably seen many variants of this. When the items come into the item hopper, the powered rail is going to get turned off, so the minecart hopper will park itself here, and all of those items get dispensed from the hopper down through to the dropper. Why did that not dispense all of them? <laughs> it's like the only one that's got this block here. So I've clearly like left a block from building in the wrong spot. So let's just try that again. We put in six andesite and all six of them will be dispensed. You can see the dropper is now empty. Business of hooking these up to water streams, which was no problem or so ever. And that goes off towards where we have the storage, which is near where we're AFKing. So it comes over to this spot here, goes up to the top. There are some honey blocks. There is ice. It is that old trick of sliding them across some hoppers. 
So we have five item filters here and we might actually need more than that. I just kind of built this thing as is. I decided to make it five wide so I guess we'll soon find out. So we are now basically ready to get this farm up and running and then leave it running and hopefully get the puffer fish that we need from it. However, we need to do an important test first of all and it involves me putting some water right there. Excellent. Um, I'm not sure if you can put kelp straight onto this block. If we have to swap it out, we can't do that because there are rails below here that will get messed up by the water. So, no. <laughs> no. No is the answer. Uh, that means I am going to need some ice. A lot of ice. So this guy, Iceman Efo. I was going to fly over to his farm and use it because I thought, hey, Efo won't mind. Efo's cool. He'll be fine with me using his farm, but I believe he actually has set up a shop in which to buy the ice from. And here it is. And, and yes, yes, I do know my Canadian customs. I have taken off my boots before heading in here. Right, so is he stocked up? Snow, blue ice, packed ice, we need regular ice. Yes, there is loads of this stuff. So I guesstimate that I need about six stacks, so we'll play it safe and we'll take nine. Also, with the potion business, I haven't been too caught up in the shenanigans going on over here. Apparently, that is now a giant llama. <laughs> and this thing has sprouted up out of the ground, out of the ocean. That is a fantastic build right there. And half of the shopping district is like mycelium, which is just disgusting. I'm just very glad that it hasn't extended over into our glorious moon biome. So whilst in the area, I figured I would check all of our shops and see what kind of profits we've picked up. And look at this, absolutely tons right here. But that's not all of it, because that's just from the concrete shop. Look at what I got from my own personal shop. Someone has been buying out all of my stock. So I was thinking a sort of mega restocking live stream is in order to go around all the shops and stock them all up again. And I realized that would be on the day that this video goes out. So as you know, I stream after the episodes go out around an hour later. And what I'll be doing is hanging out in this place, restocking my shops. So be sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash Asuma if you want to catch that one. Okay then, now we've got some ice to be placing and then a break in. That was going oh so well, and then Minecraft does what Minecraft does. When I got to the blocks down the bottom here, the swim mode started getting funky and moving me up and down while I was breaking blocks. And for some reason, this also didn't work here as well, which makes no sense because there are source blocks going all the way across all the sides. So don't know how I'm going to fix that. So here is a much needed instant replay. Basically, all of a sudden, I just blast into swim mode and take out some of the magma blocks. Oh, oh well. And look at this. All of my rails have just been ruined, basically. i got to do it all over again. <sighs> that is so annoying. That all happened just because of weird Minecraft quirkiness when you're in the water. So we are all fixed up, but no signs of any fishies here. And that is completely normal because they can't spawn inside of those bubbles. But you might be thinking, Asuma, what are you doing here? This makes no sense. Well, there is one last component to this farm, and that is to put in some stone pressure plates. We're going to put these in a checkerboard pattern. Now, this means that the columns above them are going to have fish spawning in them. They will then most likely make contact with the bubbles, get sucked down to the bottom. And if they don't, and they just naturally drift down here, they fall into air block with the magma block below, and they take damage and die that way. So this layout with the checkerboard at the bottom will bring the fishies down to be killed by the magma blocks and collected by our minecarts. And of course we can't be forgetting about our minecarts. I uh, <laughs> didn't put these in. They're quite important. And there they are going around doing their thing. Good to see. So now there is one last thing for us to do and that is to take down the beacon here. What you got to remember is that these blocks that are higher up in the world are going to lower the spawn rates. So once we remove this beacon, then the farm down there is fully optimized. So I've been stood here rather awkwardly for a few minutes and straight away loads of fishies coming through. Check this out, tons of tropical fish, a fair bit of cod, 
Not so many puffer fish though. I'm hoping this number will increase with a little bit more time. And if we stick our head over here, looking in this area, yeah, you can see the items coming through. And I just saw another puffer fish. That is great. Now, there are other hermits online at the moment. So this farm can run even faster. But it is really promising to see that at the moment, there are lots of fishies in here. I know it's probably actually a little difficult because it's so dark. But it is working. The, the farm works. So one overnight AFK session later. And what do we have? Lots of puffer fish. However, for the first hour while lots of other people were online, this is what I got. And then when there were less people online for many, many hours, I got this. I, I think having more people online, they must have not been near oceans and therefore we had a larger mob cap. But this thing has actually been surprisingly slow when no one else is online. However, if we look at the other ones right here, we've filled these, what, all the way to the top? Wow. And then, hey, we've got... Oh, the filter broke. Interesting. We've got a whole bunch of bone meal from this, though. That's cool. And then, apparently some slimes got in there. Wow. Okay, this is crazy. Well, I know why this filter broke. It might look a little bit strange that there's no items in here. It's because I never set up a filter on the end. So this thing has enough items in it for the redstone to bleed over. So there is something that I need to go and fix. So although we have enough puffer fish to make more potions than we're probably ever going to use, I really like the idea that this brewer can make an insane amount, which is why I want an insane supply. So this has been a fun experiment, and what we might do next episode is make another puffer fish farm. But that's not all it's going to do, okay? I've had an idea to make a really unique and interesting fish farm. And it is going to involve using a lot of iron. So if we head over here to the iron tower, you will see that I've actually gone through and cleared out everything recently because we've been using so much iron on the brewer. And now I have none left. So I turned the farm on, which you do by hitting this button, and then nothing happened for like quite a few days. No iron coming through. So my camera account currently has night vision on for recording, so we can see everything down here crystal clear. I don't know when this happened, but somehow the villagers made their way out from these beds. It probably has something to do with upgrading to 1.16.4, and it might just mean this thing is permanently broken. Apparently on this side, I also lost a couple of villagers. They might be alive down there. I'm going to have a look, but I don't think they'd survive all of those falls. Oh yeah, and look, there's none. <laughs> They're all gone in this corner. Oh, we've got a survivor down here, right? Okay, so that's one more accounted for. And that's all of them. And you know what? I got a low tolerance for working with villagers. I may just turn to another hermit and be like, hey, I had an iron farm. Mine broke. Can I use yours? Someone will surely help us out because we're going to need a lot of iron for the project we're going to do in the next episode. So if you remember a couple of episodes back, we dropped off some potions for Efo, And I was watching his video and he mentioned, I believe it was the instant damage potion that he was interested in and if we check this out i've been crafted lots of fermented spider eyes that are used to create that oh look at that i found some iron and i just so happen to need it actually you know what that's for is, is literally for what i'm going to do next this is the end of the fermented spider eye line so i've got to fill all of those up going all the way back across here with lots of mine carts filling these up and it drops it off at various different points and then we should have enough shulker boxes to get the instant damage potion fired up and yes, the puffer fish. We're going to get this one going, even though we don't have a crazy amount of ingredients yet. And yeah, I am a little bit low on shulker boxes. That is all I've got left at the moment. And we may not need to do more end dimension raiding just yet, because yes, yes, I was pretty sure I still had a stash of these. Excellent. So we probably have enough left over for another three potions to be set up and get going. And here you can see we've got the water breathing up and running. And then we got the instant damage coming through as well. Yeah, the first three always mess up, right? You can see their water bottles. That is, of course, only when we first initialize the brewer. And this right here, I think, is where the fermented spider eyes go. No, it'll be the next one along. There it is. You can see those are all stocked up. And with that taken care of, I want to deliver a gift to another hermit. So we're going to take these instant health potions. And then increase their potency with a glowstone so that they're, I don't know what, level 2, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then turn them into splash potions. But, oh no, you know, what's, what's going on here? Something is missing. I don't know how. There's, there's a block and two pieces of redstone missing. 
That is very peculiar. Okay, green isn't one of the colours I've got on me. But that is also why I always carry around some dyes as well, so we can make exactly what we need. Oh yeah, it was two redstone that we needed, so... I think this thing is actually just going to continue working from this moment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the redstone is built, so it'll just, you know, get going. Yep, there has been no downside whatsoever, so that was quite fortunate that it was broken in that particular way. Anyways, we've got to head out of here and go to a whole other dimension. And that dimension is, of course, the end dimension. And you know what? I have absolutely no idea where I'm supposed to be going right now. Aha! This is what we're looking for. Pigs in space. I mean, what else do you think we came here for, right? They had to be pigs. And so, watching ZF's episode, I saw that he brought a load of pigs over to here. I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose of this is. Is, exactly. <laughs> anyway, a few of them got damaged, you know, they would hit blocks. And, of course, building something like this, you don't want to lose your piggies. So I thought we'd, uh, we'd bring him this and he'd be able to give them some healing love. With a sign, of course, always got to leave a sign. From X, need more, just ask. So, I have some homework for you. Can you think of some hermits that could do with some potions, but maybe don't think to use them? I want to start giving these to more and more hermits to let them know that the brewer is there and that, you know, things are evolving. But anyway, for now, I need to go and AFK over at the fish farm, although I think what I'll do is set up a portal between that location and the nether hub and start doing some preparations for next episode where we're building... Yet another puffer fish farm, but trust me, this is going to be really interesting, okay? You don't want to miss it. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave a like. Thank you as always for the support, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.